Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. Today, Brandon Johnson, Ryan Mitchell, and Stella Cannon will be sharing their experiences with iOS 10. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO10. So, who's been in iOS 10 since at least launch day? Oh, Wii U, that's me. I think I was two days off. Two days off? All right. Yeah. So we've all had it for at least, what, oh, two weeks now? I think, right? It's a, at it's least. A month. Yep. It came out, what, two weeks ago tomorrow, right? Did that sound? I can't remember. I put the the public beta, the gold master, on my iPhone 6 the Thursday or Friday before, I think the Thursday before the actual release. So I was half week early. And Brandon, I think you had it like all summer, nice. right? Yeah, that's true. I've had it since uh, since WWDC, or shortly after WWDC when it became available to developers. Yep, I was uh, one of those goofballs who put it on their uh, main iOS devices, the both of them, uh, my iPad and my iPhone, and suffered the consequences for uh, the better part of the two months. But it was worth it, more or less. Yeah, I remember you t- telling me, don't install it. I think it was uh, public beta 2 or something. I had it on, I put it on my... I put the early public beta on my iPhone 5 and my iPad mini 2 earlier in the summer. So like right, public, right. public beta 2, beta 3 era. And I don't use those Yeah, see, the much, trick so. is with the, yeah, with the 5S, I have to say, so my, my uh, phone at the time was a 5S. I recently upgraded to the 7, which you'll hear about more uh, in a future podcast, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, uh, yes, right? The iPhone 5S uh, yeah. kind of slows to a crawl on iOS 10, I feel. Um, however, it does enable uh, Apple Watch users to get uh, WatchOS 3, which was a massive, massive, massive draw for me because, um, well, f- for for reasons you might have heard through uh, other Nexus podcasts, but um, WatchOS 3 was really the reason why I stuck with uh, iOS 10 all that time because uh, I really wanted to be able to respond to text messages from my phone, all that other good stuff that comes with the newest uh, version of WatchOS which you can probably hear more on a future version of PodKit. This is true. This is true. So the... So much cross the following devices do support iOS 10. So it's the iPhone 5 and newer. So that's the iPhone from 2013. No, 2012. Wait, yeah. when did mine come out? I forget. Do you have Touch ID? No, yeah, well, I have the SE. I have oh, okay. the SE. That came did out, out the um, fall of 2015. Oh. So, sorry, yes. Wow. I meant that spring of 16, I said fall of 15. Yes, spring of 2016. Thank you. Um, the iPad 4, iPad Air, or iPad Air 2, the the iPad Mini 2, 3, or 4, and any iPad Pro, and, of course, the lone 6th sixth, sixth generation iPod Touch. Woo! <laughs> Ian just did a little nice. dance celebrating that. So, Every, everybody loves the iPod Touches. I touch. Everybody does. So this doesn't eliminate 32-bit devices, but it's pretty close. So I believe the iPhone 5 is the only, no, iPod Touch maybe is the only 32-bit. Those are the 32-bit ones. And the iPad 4. I don't remember. Brandon, do you know? Uh, the Mini 2 as well? Nope. Yeah, that's, the, that's, four the Mini and... 2 is 64-bit because I have that and I absolutely... Oh, really? Yeah. It's the same era oh, as nice. the 5S. So, right, that makes sense. So I think you're right. It's the iPhone 5 and iPad 4 then that are the only remaining uh, 32-bit devices. But um, I don't necessarily recommend that anyone with an iPhone 5 run uh, iOS 10 uh, based on my experience with the 5S, which is um, a little bit newer. So I ran iOS 10 on my iPhone 5. I don't use it very much, and it doesn't have a cellular connection, mm-hmm. but it seemed okay to me. It was it didn't seem any that much slower than iOS 9. I mean, it's mm-hmm. your usual slug- sluggishness for a four-year-old phone, but it seemed okay. It seemed a lot better than um, iOS four, uh, 7 on an iPhone 4, in my opinion. Right. I would definitely – I definitely agree with that. Um, it's definitely a non-zero possibility that um, when when my uh, 5S hit that, like, three-and-a-half-year mark, I just started to lose it with how slow it was getting uh, in general, and it was the storage was filling up and stuff, too. So I think if you um, can – tolerate What's, a little slowness yeah. it's just fine if it's not a main device that's it's true. absolutely fine you get a lot of features and it modernizes the device a little bit so so let's talk about those features Truly. oh yeah we should probably do that so i and i think help with ian uh compiled this list yeah i contributed like five things <laughs> three things all right so i mostly stole these from the apple 
iOS 10 rev- um, section and anything else that I thought was pretty notable. I will also say I, I recommend the Mac Stories review that Federico Vitici has written. It's massive, I don't know, 50,000 words or something, tons and tons of uh, videos and screenshots that are uh, very good. I'm I'm still not done with it. It's been a week since I've read anything in it, but it's good. <laughs> or you can just 17. listen to us talk for 45 minutes. <laughs> that too. But if you want to know more and see what <laughs> see what might be discussed. So, right, right. Anyone who reads a Vitici review is doing themselves a favor because, like, Vitici stuff is pretty darn great. Um, I read it even though I talk about the stuff all the time. Definitely recommended. Yeah. So, the, the first thing someone might notice in iOS 10 is some visual changes. So, and one of these is going to be Control Center. So, in iOS 7, this was introduced. It had kind of a, a flat theme, there were a thin kind of trends. Lucent or dark, no, it was a translucent panel with some darker lines around icons. And then iOS 8, they became a little more solid, more filled. And then here in iOS 10, it, it got another redesign. So it's no longer, you know, edge to edge. You you slide up, it's kind of a floating rounded uh, rectangle. The, um, the music controls have been moved to a second page. So if you swipe to the left, you'll have your music media playback there. So volume. AirPlay, Bluetooth um, support, play, pause, next, back. YouTube, it has YouTube. I wonder how many people would miss those two little dots at the bottom indicating that there's a second page. My mom did. She asked me how to do it yesterday. And so she said, oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's uh, pretty often that people um, miss those. I know sometimes I forget them, and I've used this for a while now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I've forgotten them. I, I very much appreciate that the buttons are larger for the play, pause. Especially, you know, when driving, yeah, and I want to sure. switch quickly, pause a song or something. It's it's a lot easier to do that. Um, now, if you have HomeKit enabled, which we'll get to a little bit, um, that would be a third page if you have a HomeKit device set up. So it's yeah. beyond the medium. Mm. Um, so it's a little more spacious. There's a little more color, a little blue. And um, the lock is red. Yeah, the, yeah rotation lock, red. Yeah. Um, the night mode? No, the do not disturb. It's like did, purple. Did all the yeah, icons yeah. used to have kind of the same color, no. or have they always had distinct? Yeah, colors? yeah, I think that's they true. Used to be the same. Yes. Okay. So, so they've distinct- they were the same. I think uh, from nine, uh, and like one of the interesting things that I uh, I don't remember where I heard about this, but it's actually like an accessibility thing to have differentiation between colors of buttons with like different uh, different functionality, which I thought was really interesting. Hmm. Um. Of course, I can't find an article citing that right now, but um, like, I, it sounds like that was one of the one of the things that motivated it. On the other hand, for example, you want to make sure that you're not just using red and green, because that's a different accessibility issue. <laughs> Very much so. So right, right, exactly. So you have to make sure you pick the colors in a in a, in a way that uh, that still gives contrast to whoever looks at it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you're exactly right. I've you're played exactly some. Right. I've played some games where they have like multiple different, uh, like colorblind modes, um, with you know different color combinations. So I, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen anything about that being available for like Control Center. But it would be interesting if they if they did have that. So I'm just noticing here. I I I've pulled up the Control Center page on Mac Stories, and I see you know there on the bottom there's the flashlight clocks. Um, or alarm timer, I should say, um, calculator and camera. But I've I've uninstalled the ca- the calculator app on my phone or hidden it because I use Calcbot, and that means that my control center only has three icons on the bottom. Oh, so it's just awkwardly spaced out. I think yeah, St. Paul Public Schools also removed that, so I don't have the calculator. <laughs> Why do they remove the calculator? I don't know. And they make you download the, like this really crappy app, and you're just like, okay. Huh. And you know it's crazy. I mean, I'd appreciate a well de- well designed calculator app. Sure, and they, I don't use the Apple one, but SPPS has removed the calculator app for as long as I can remember. Yeah, so, right and, when it and, came out. And I don't know how they were able to do that before iOS ten. Oh, there's probably some. That's such a strange like enterprise artifact, the thing is, right? There's like, that's such a strange way to do in a provisioning profile. But you know, in in the calculator app, if you go to the side in landscape mode, it's a full scientific calculator. So there might be some functions in there <sighs> that they don't want. Students to mm, like use during testing, just, yeah, like yeah. you know, sine and cosine and things like that. Okay, maybe, yeah, I don't know. What's funny about the app uh, that they give know. you though is that like, okay, there's like pop up ads. Just, like, <laughs> oh my god, oh. they didn't even buy an ad free version. That's <laughs> no, they didn't. Oh no, uh, St. Paul Public Schools refuses to spend money on any apps that they give to the teachers and students. They'll just spend the money Heaven on the forbid. all the iPads and not like an enterprise. Yep. Dollar app. Oh, yep. Well, I mean. 
I, I guess you, you spec it out, you buy it, and you don't have any room for anything more. Nope. So oh, let's not goodness. just make this episode all about complaining about St. Paul Public Schools' so, uh, personalized learning. The, another feature that has been redesigned is the music app. So this was demoed at WWDC, and it's most notably filled with larger typefaces, a redesign of the tab bar on the bottom, which is now no longer bro- no longer configurable. Oh, where'd it go? And a uh, redesign now playing screen that you have to scroll scroll up to see the shuffle and repeat button. Another thing my mom has asked me about. <laughs> but I, I overall ah. like it. I think things are, it's a little more spacious. So it's it's easier for casually looking at it and, and figuring out what to tap. So I think it's better for more on the go, um, farther away. So you don't have to be looking at it quite so close. And similar to right. Control Center, the the play forward back volume buttons are all a little larger so i like it mm-hmm. i don't know what you guys think yes indeed i'd, I'd agree yes uh, yeah I'm definitely right. definitely so um one of the things that's really nice about it from uh the perspective of like uh somebody who subscribed to apple music at one point right is that that integration is simultaneously more comprehensive and less obtrusive i guess yeah um, i would agree and uh, like I, yeah so like the that whole Back back in the olden days, there used to be like uh, some distinction between the uh, music that you get through Apple Music, that for you page and stuff like that, and the rest of the music app, uh, which at times could get a little bit um, that didn't really make a ton of sense. And it seems simultaneously more integrated now, right? So I can access like Apple Music playlists um, through the uh, alongside the rest of my playlists, um, stuff like that. Uh, and just like the visual language too is kind of a little bit more uh, cohesive, it seems. So, um, but now that I don't subscribe to Apple Music, I saw that too, which is really interesting because I, I subscribed to it for a little while with iOS 10, and uh, the differences aren't quite as striking as 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 they were back in the iOS 9 days. Hmm. So I I have subscribed to Apple Music since the first day you could, and I have not looked back, and I love it, and I think the 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 integration of it in the music app is, is pretty good. I've heard some people complaining in some other podcasts that it is a little more difficult when you aren't an Apple music subscriber. There's um, not, you can't quite as you can't really customize, you know, if you use playlists versus artists or something, you can't you know replace that in the bar in the bottom, which you, mm-hmm. I don't know if you could in iOS seven and on days, but in the iOS six and below you, you were able to reorder that um, tab bar in the bottom. Right. So, Yes, indeed. Well, in addition, like one of one of the things that I've heard uh, perhaps the most uproar about is the uh, updated lock screen redesign, right? How you have to push the home button in order to uh, bring up either the passcode or activate Touch ID um, to unlock your phone. Um, I, I I don't know if there's anything else you guys had uh, related to notification center, but um, like the the lock screen seems to be like the next kind of biggest thing that caused the most uproar. Yeah, I have uh, something that's going to kind of combine the two into one. So I'll I'll wait until the end right after, on. after we talked about the rest of them. So I'll just start off by saying I like the new home button to unlock. As a Touch ID user, it's great. I don't have to do an extra movement. And especially since I have the iPhone 7, I can raise my phone, press home, and it is open. It Touch ID is in the time it takes me to physically press the button so it seems very quick right way, well way easier now i know my parents like to they both have devices with touch id though in the winter my mom especially her fingers are super dry so they don't really register touch id in the winter so she has to swipe and do the passcode which is a l- little more work now that the swipe to unlock is is gone it's it's mm-hmm. pretty good. I mean, I like it on phones, but like on the iPads, I don't know. What is our iPad? Like the Pro? Uh, iPad Air. Is it? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. That's we definitely we... don't have the Pro. I don't know. <laughs> Hell, I don't well, think about this. We've had these since before the Pro came out. Oh, so. that's true. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, on my um, iPad, it's, I would agree. It's kind of strange. It's just awkward. You have to like yeah. push it, and then you got to put your password in, and then you got to like. Yeah. Well, so so I think I've heard a lot of people complaining that like it's an extra step, right? You have to go through the extra click to get to the point where you're putting in it makes your passcode. Sense. But like, know. but like, think about it this way: um, you 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 used to have to tap the home button and then swipe to unlock. And then put in your passcode. So that swipe to unlock is just the second step. So now your second step is just hitting that same button again. Yeah, that's that's true, actually. 
it just, I, you know, people who used to hit the sleep button now have to also hit home. So you have to switch to using home. And I think mm, mm-hmm. it's, I think it really makes sense with the iPhone 7 and newer because you have the solid state home button. So you're not physically wearing a button out a little more. Mm-hmm. Also, what's like people are worried annoying that. is that when you have it like not unlocked and like, you know how like before iOS 10, you could like swipe it over and it would go to the camera. Yep. No, it goes straight to the, um, put in your passcode thing. Yeah. And like, it's harder to get to that yeah, so you, camera you, screen. Oh, really? You find it hard? I think, yeah. I feel like, isn't it whole edge to edge? Because I know on iOS 5, you sw- well, no, you used to swipe up from the bottom right. I think oh, that's what yeah. it was. Yeah, no, yeah. So now you swipe up that. and it's control center, or unless you're in the bottom left and then it's your continuity or handoff. I try doing that still. Bottom left? Uh-huh. What? So the bottom left, if you have... Multiple, I, prob- I probably so don't have continuity I'm, in Anyway. If I'm on an app, so here's my app. My Apple Watch shows up. So if I then enter my passcode, we'll go to it. Um, it goes to the Apple Watch app because my Apple Watch is on. So if okay. my Apple Watch is on, it will then say, oh, here you go. If you go to like Pandora, you can do the same. The little icon will appear at the bottom left and you can just swipe it up. I like that they've reduced the directions that you have to swipe to just left and right on the lock screen. I like that. For sure. You yeah. know, Um one of the things that, yeah, we, we struggled with for a long time on the Android lock screen was, like, swiping up to to uh, unlock and, like, you know, swiping, like, from a corner to, like, get to the camera and swiping from the other corner. You know, and it was always, like, the gestures didn't always quite work. So just having left and right makes it very consistent, yeah, very easy Yeah, I agree. To do. I like it. I like it a lot. And it's, you know, edge to edge getting to the camera mm-hmm. or notifications. I don't find myself using the notification center as much on the lock screen, but I think I do a little bit more and more, especially because I can use some features without needing to unlock the phone. I can just swipe it's all over. The widgets now. Yeah, the so. widgets. So like the, um, I have my Authy for two factor. So if I swipe over and put my finger on the Touch ID, then it will show me my two factor codes without having to actually unlock right. my phone. And there's like a little edit button right at the bottom. Yep, it's like right there. Yeah, and so you, you can add in stuff. And I have to say, there are so many apps that have widgets now. I yeah. remember when Notification Center first came out, just a couple, but it's just crazy how many support it now. Tumblr has one. It's called Trending on Tumblr. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so the thing that I wanted to complain about for the lock screen um, that has to do with notifications is that I feel like this was a perfect opportunity since Apple was already doing a redesign of the lock screen for them to fix the disconnect between what you have to do like gesture wise to notifications on the lock screen versus when you pull them down from the notification, you know, like when you're, when you've got it unlocked. Right. Yeah. Cause like when I, I, when I pull it down, when I already have the device unlocked, if I swipe something away, then it goes away. Right. If I tap on it, that opens the app and opens that notification. Whereas, like, if I'm on the lock screen, if I tap on it, it don't do anything, right? Yeah. I have to swipe it to the right to get into the app. And I have to swipe it to the left to remove the notification. And it's like, where where did that swipe right thing come from? That doesn't exist anywhere else in the operating system. Yeah, I do. I do like the. The iOS 6 day is where you just swipe the icon and open to that app. I thought that was such a slick animation and, and way of doing it, if that's kind of what you mean. Right. Yeah, did you did you also have to swipe it, uh, like, when you normally, when you pulled down the notification tray and you... Oh, yeah. No, uh, oh, yeah. the notification, it's Linden and Glory. It would have, uh, like, a, a header on, a, it was, I think, a table view in there. So you'd have a header saying the app, and then in, uh, underneath you'd have all the notifications from that app. Oh, yeah. You can just tap on any one of them. Oh, okay. And it would open it up. Yeah. So there were no, like, rich interaction things with it. Right. Like you can do now. And so I'm here, you know, do I 3D touch on it? Do I tap it? Do I swipe it down? Do I swipe left, hit mm-hmm. view? Or, yeah, it's, I still don't know when I'm... I just kind of, I see, okay, that's what I do. Then I unlock the phone, go into the app. Yeah, okay. Also, what else they have is the, I don't know how to explain this. If you touch your phone up, it, if you touch your phone up, it will turn on. And Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, whatever like, that's pay, called. I don't know. Uh, lift to wake? Raise to wake. Raise to wake. I don't know. Like, on, I am, mm-hmm. okay, so if I'm, like, listening to me, it's, like, on the bus, and, like, I put my phone down, and, like, the bus bumps up, <laughs> my phone will just turn on, and I'm, like, uh, like, huh. I I've, I've right, right. I like it a lot of the time, the... but it it can be 
annoying at other times when I, you know, sure. I'm just, I'm just like waving. Sometimes I just like play with my phone and then like the screen's on, I'm doing stuff. I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's super touchy still. Yeah. I, um, yeah, the doing that kind of feature is, is always a challenge. Um, like over the summer, I, I found that my Nexus 5X was doing stuff in my pocket without my permission because like the ambient screen would turn on because I like jostled it while walking. And then like my, my leg would like activate something on the screen through my pants. And yeah, yeah. um, it's not good. Yeah, no. So hopefully uh, I haven't heard reports of too many people having trouble with lift to wake raise to wake you know like doing stuff while it's in their pocket but of course i haven't been looking at reports a whole lot in general. i haven't seen anything bad on twitter at least so it, it seems it seems pretty good it works most of the time so that's i guess good enough for me and that that will only yeah, work absolutely on the i'd say the, the exact same thing. thing okay yeah so next uh a new feature in the clocks app so bedtime so the entire clocks app got kind of a dark makeover and then a new feature called bedtime was put in it. So this lets you set how much sleep you want to get in a day and when you want to wake up. And so then it will say, hey, you should go to bed. You can set it to be at the time you need to go to bed or 15 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that beforehand. And then it will act as an alarm. I think it it's a more soothing alarms that you can choose. Now, you can't choose a song or any other existing al- alarm or old alarm on the app like you used to be able to for the – or you still can for the alarm section. But – so you have these fancy new alarms that you can choose to do on. You can do any any day of the week. It has to be the same day. So you can do, I don't know. I have mine set to weekdays. Is there a new song? Um, I, th- I think they're all new for the bed- bedtime app. But they're, and they're exclusive to the bedtime yep. app. So I'll say I use this, this and I every night ignore when it tells me to go to bed <laughs> for the most part. But Be quiet, mom. You're not the boss of me. So, well, here, here I am as Mr. Unemployed, so I, I, I can do that and still get by. Uh, so I, I do try and wake up at the time it, it tells me to. And it will then log in the help app when you're in bed. So it's, it can somehow detect, I think it's when you plug in your phone and it stays still, then it, mm-hmm. that it counts as the going to bed time. So it seems pretty intelligent about that. Yeah, it's Does the Apple Watch uh, record like sleep time data for you? It can using a third-party app. There's no Apple app that will let you okay. record. So okay. there are some apps that I have used if I have my watch on while I sleep, though I prefer to sleep with it off because it's mm-hmm. kind of bulky mm. and I'd like to yeah, have it charged Yeah, and you don't have like the five-day uh, five battery life. Yeah. Right? Now, the uh, David Smith or underscore David Smith, he has an app called Sleep Plus Plus, which I've used, which logs it on your watch. It's pretty simple and it works, works well. That uh, he's been known to... Basically, charges watch for two 20-minute periods a day. So, you know, mm. when he's up in the morning, getting taking a shower or something, and then when he's at bed or in the evening, then, you know, brushing his teeth, getting ready for bed. So that's when he'll charge his watch. Otherwise, he's wearing it all the time. Yeah, because when I heard about this bedtime Yeah, you bet. Feature, I definitely... Go for it. I definitely also uh, go with the David Smith uh, school of Apple Watch charging because I use an app called Pillow, which is admittedly not his app. but I have used that um, as well. But those much the same kind of functions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I charge it just essentially for half an hour before I go to bed and then for half an hour after I wake up while I'm like making coffee or whatever. And uh, usually works pretty well. Usually works pretty well. So I'm a, a uh, definitely a proponent of that uh, school of thought there. Uh, but the Pillow iOS app too is kind of interesting because you're, you're right, Brian, that this is kind of like a, a, a minor Sherlocking of that, uh, as it were, because um, Apple kind of pulled in that... Um, that functionality in some ways because it does track how much sleep you're getting pillow and i think sleep plus plus give you a lot finer metrics still yeah uh, so the, the, the apple thing. one just says in bed the pillow and sleep plus plus do mm-hmm. i think in like bed and asleep sleep time and, yeah so it'll yeah so it'll yeah it'll tell you um stella's here finding the app on the app store and she found oh it. the sleep plus plus one uh no, pillow so i've used oh. I've got to say, I've, I haven't used Pillow on my watch. I've only used it on my phone, which might be a reason why my iPhone 6 battery is so bad, because I <laughs> have used it off and on for eight months or so. So that's where the Pillow mode on the iPhone is. You charge it and you put it face down. It uses a proximity sensor to turn off the screen, but it is on listening for audio data, and you can listen to every time it heard you awake at night. It's kind of creepy, at least if you have the, the Pro version, which I which I have bought after months of using it. So it's 
it, it right. and it will tell you then when you were asleep if you were turning around a lot at night and you know it heard something more loud it might say okay well they were they were awake here so we're going to say you slept till 2:45 and then from 2:46 you were asleep again for example mm-hmm. so uh bedtime i use it anyone else here use it i just set it up definitely I okay i don't look at my ipad well, <laughs> it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense to set it on my ipad yeah it'd be a little yeah you could but it'd be a little strange yeah yeah so yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because I actually use that my iPad as like my main alarm. Uh, mm. <laughs> that would so be that would be a way of using. Uh, but iPad. does it sync health data to your phone? It seems because I think to health data is. Mark? Uh, I think health data is local to every device. I want to say hmm. that's true. That is true. That is true. Uh, so I could be wrong. I though. guess I'm not 100 percent sure about that. But the first the first device I set it up on was my iPad, for better or worse. Okay. Well, we'll hear about that later, I guess, with data syncing. So then <laughs> another feature is system haptics. I love this. I think this is unique to the iPhone 7, though. So That makes sense, because that's the only one with the haptic engine, right? Well, or the 6S has engine. a haptic engine. However, I don't think it's the same level of quality as, this, as the iPhone 7 one. The 7 one is more precise okay. or efficient or something. So this is basically... So any system... Uh, kind of interaction that you do will have a a haptic feedback. So a toggle switch, scrolling through like a date picker, um, rearranging a table view. So that's when you you know do the edit. The the minus signs are on the left and the. Little so this is like hamburgers. the equivalent of Windows XP clicking through the speakers every time I click with the mouse. Uh, kind of. There's no. It doesn't pulse when you <laughs> swipe back or hit hit back. In okay. The navigation view. Um, what are some other? Hold on. I think in my my iPhone 7 review, I list a whole bunch of places. <laughs> Plug to brianm.me slash post slash iPhone dash 7. You know, we can just put that link in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, but now people listening can have an audio of, of me saying it. Um, where do I talk about it? Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Okay, so, so I, and okay, so also when opening notification center or control center or swiping them, them closed, it, it's, it's more pronounced if you, if you flick it a little harder. Rearranging items in a table view, pulling to refresh, which is pretty nice. Pitching to zoom on like a full screen image. So I noticed this in Tweetbot. I think also in the Photos app, you might be able to do it. So scrolling a picker wheel and many more. And so developers can also use these APIs in their own apps. So I'm excited to see more and more um, interactions coming in. What are your thoughts, Brandon? Yes, indeed. I'd uh, I'd agree completely. Uh, one of, that's one of the things I noticed uh, as soon as I got my seven out of the box. Um, among the other things, like it actually uh, turning on when I push the power button, that's pretty cool. Um, but the that sort of system haptic uh, feedback, as, as as you mentioned, is present in a lot of other places other than just uh, logging in. But even like the most the most kind of um, poignant and and obvious one to me is that interaction just when you open the phone. That click feels better than the click on my 5s ever did, which is uh, kind of goofy. But oh, so you mean the, cool. the, on the home? Button. One of the other things that's kind of interesting. Uh, you're right. You know the 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 haptic feedback that comes from uh, kind of other aspects of it too, like um, haptics from notifications. Right, already feel better um, as well on the seven. Yeah, and I notice um, it just it's a lot softer feeling, but also more kind of direct yeah. and driven versus the six for yeah. things like toggling your your mute and ringer switch. It has a just a, like a soft did it kind of pulse. Mm. Um, charging it is a little different, so everything is just a little more. I think it can it can pulse or do haptics at a faster rate, and um, I don't know if, if anyone's heard about the the third audio or DAC, so digital audio uh, converter oh, yeah. in the iPhone Seven, ATP, the good good podcast. They said that they had heard from someone who thought the third DAC was used for the haptic feedback, so or the haptic engine. So it was really mm-hmm. just driven with sound, which I think is pretty cool. Does the SE have the haptic engine? Because I know that came out after the 6S. I have no idea. I'm so I'm so bad at phones. I don't know. I don't think it does. Okay. Because I, I remember seeing I someone Googling from... it right now. I remember seeing someone from the UI kit team at Apple on Twitter say, everyone with new iPhone 7s, have, have fun pulling to refresh and, and just using your phone, <laughs> kind of like winky face. So this was a feature that I don't think Apple had really announced or anything, and I, mm. I was very, I'm very impressed with it. Yeah, because I feel like you would have noticed Stella yep. if your phone suddenly started like buzz buzzing every time you did things. Oh, true, true. Yeah. Did you find something, Brandon? 
Yes, it does not look like uh, the SE has a Taptic engine. But uh, yeah, that's definitely one of the things uh, that's most kind of striking about the 7 when you actually have it like in your pocket or in your hand is that uh, that vibration is kind of more the default and less kind of an option. So. But you can turn it off if you don't like it. Mm-hmm. There is a setting for that. So yep. another feature is Siri. I don't use Siri very much. I don't either. I don't like it talking to me. <laughs> but if you huh. do use Siri, you can now use it with some more apps. So there's a uh, Siri API. I think there's, what, seven different types of apps that can use it, most notably messaging or, um, I, I don't know, probably Uber or something. So, think, hey, Siri. Wait, wait, Uber is a type of app. Hey, uh, sorry, ride sharing. So Uber and Lyft. There we go. Wait, can Safari? I don't know. It has a microphone. That might be for searching. Oh, oh. Oh, that would be a voice dictation in the okay. keyboard. Okay. Ah, yeah. <laughs> did, it, did it pick any of that up? Yeah, it got zero zero seven. I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Double oh seven. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, Siri thinks we're talking about James Bond, I guess. So, not like groundbreaking, you know, changes, but just iterative. Yep. yep. So you can use Siri. It's improved in some ways. Uh, I think there's some new APIs for. Um, using natural language processing with Siri. So developers can use that in their apps as well. Another f- another feature that is new is HomeKit improvements. I don't have any HomeKit devices. So this is things like smart light switches, smart lights, smart outlets, smart garage doors, smart locks, smart... It sounds really blank. cool. It's like the security system, isn't it? Can it hook on to it your... Can, yes. Yeah, it's any any items that would fall under like the smart home movement. Yeah, um, that also yeah have yeah. partnered with like Apple's API. That would be really cool if you had the money. I mean, <laughs> I, I dream of the day that I have a house where I have a bunch of smart lights and smart can talk to smart it. this and that. But I also do follow the Internet of shit Twitter account, which loves to point out all of the security <laughs> failures that come with. Um, iot devices because a lot of them aren't necessarily tested to the same level of security or assumed to be as secure and actually recently i saw there was a very large uh, ddos attack that was thought to be mostly from iot cameras (laughs) because you know their their access passwords were set to the default and no one changes them and so oh good lord you can hack into them and and video there. can be incredibly incredibly high bandwidth like that you're so right. those devices Absolutely. can probably that was, the, that was like the it. yeah that was like the largest ddos on record i believe that the one of that security firm that european security firm is that the one i think so it was this weekend that's when i read about it yep least. that that was the one oh goodness it's pretty goofy well believe it or not i actually do have something that is sort of kind of technically home kit capable i put it in the show notes right there it's a misfit bolt it's a it's a type of uh, light bulb there uh, it's not HomeKit capable out of the box, but there's a um, let me see. There's there's a there's a, a piece of software you can run on a, a computer that's running, assuming it's running twenty four seven, that will so act cool. as like a HomeKit bridge for the Bolt. Okay, so like like the yeah, AirPrint Hacktivator that was out years ago for AirPrint. So that exactly. logo, exactly, exactly. That Misfit logo, when it's yeah. really small on the light bulb itself, totally looks like a Nexus logo in grayscale. <laughs> Absolutely. It kind of does, doesn't it? It kind of does. I think, like, over time, the whole home thing will get, like, way better. They're just... Yeah, I think we're still in the early days, yeah. and I'm I'm excited that I am I'm I still live at home in my parents' house, <laughs> even though I'm a college grad. Millennials, what? Yeah. And... I think, yeah, it'll get better over time, both cheaper. I think there'll be larger leaders, and so there'll be an increase in quality and um, security, hopefully. Mm-hmm. More places will use them, too, like buildings. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. public buildings? Yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Someone hacks into, like, the Empire State <laughs> Building, turns off all the lights. I <laughs> got you. <laughs> Has anyone uh, uh, know of uh, Panic Inc.? I know, Brandon, you know of Panic. They they make Mac apps. Yes, and, indeed, like, I do. Prom- and iOS apps. They're great. They their headquarters are is in Portland, I think, and they have a sign outside this that you true. can go to a website and control the color in their sign. Oh, and they've had this for a couple of years. It looks quite nice, and I intend on visiting them and changing the color of their sign when I go to Portland. What happens if multiple people try doing it at once? I think it just changes really fast. Then <laughs> they cue it. Yeah, 
Yeah, or yeah, every 70 seconds. Yeah, queuing it, I guess. All right, let's move on to the thing that people do the most with their phones, which is a messaging. Okay, all these new update things on this. I don't know how to use any of them. I'm just like a grandma at this. I'm like, <laughs> what are these? Well, no. Sela, just sit down and let the old people here teach you how yeah. it's done. Okay. Right? <laughs> so, iMessage, big makeover. So, to start off, there are a couple new ways you can enhance your existing texting experience so at its most the i guess the most simple one would be a reaction to a message so so i should say all of this only works with iMessage so the blue message if you're sending to another ios or mac os device with the exception of maybe a larger emoji so to start off if you send three emoji or less it will display in three times size so it's kind of a reaction so slack slack does that i believe facebook messenger does that so if you just send a one, oh. two, or three emojis, it'll be bigger. Twitter does also. If you go into the DMs, DM in Twitter, okay, they get super big, bigger than this. So if you want to slide some emojis into those DMs, yeah, you should enable that feature. Oh man, you beat me to that joke, Brian. You beat me to it. I'm also, so you sorry. Check your phone. The Hangout delay is horrible for jokes like that. Okay, Brandon is sending me. That's okay. Sending me pictures. Oh. Oh, the Hillary 2016 app. Hold on. I need to send you the the, Im- the image I was looking at earlier. All right. So in addition to uh, larger emojis, you can uh, use iMessage applications. So if you have an app on your phone that supports an iMessage extension, which is what they're more formally called, you can do cool things like send a weather forecast or kind of interact with an app in an inline message view. But I think there are apps that will use that, but I don't think they're really being used very much. I think exclusively the iMessage stickers are what people are, are going to be using, mm-hmm. which are... I mean, they used them on Facebook. I remember that like Facebook Messenger was like a big... Oh, that it had sticker. integrations from yeah. other apps. Yeah. Yeah. I can't say I've ever used another right. app on Facebook Messenger, actually. I don't... I remember seeing something there, but I never really looked at it. I I'm feel like, like what? yeah. I don't want this. <laughs> I feel like Facebook Messenger is this like huge platform that has all sorts of stuff and i'm just swimming on the on the surface of this ocean and i have no idea what's underneath me i mean your dad uses them the facebook messenger <laughs> oh yeah the smiley faces <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah we should do some a series of second opinions just about messaging apps that would be fun oh that'd be great over the years mm-hmm. this is true start with aim and go from there oh, God. <laughs> oh man um start with irc more like so yeah, definitely. I, use net. I think that these these app <laughs> integrations are going to be fabulous for people who have uh, like formed their life, shaped their lives around the apps that they have on their phone. Right? If they have an app for literally everything, you know, if if the first thing that you do when you're wondering where you're going to go out and eat is open up Yelp, you know, then this is then these kinds of integrations are going to be great for you. Um, cause then, yeah. cause then you can access the stuff from those other apps right there in a conversation, right where the context demands it. Yeah. I think it, it requires Absolutely. a lot of user awareness though, to be able mm-hmm. to know about those features. And even within the Yelp app, like being able to share something, I still now I'm using my parents as an example cause I'm living with them. And so they're, I'm just available for them to ask any, any question around <laughs> tech at all. But, you know, they frequently have to ask, how do I share something or send it here and there? And so I feel like just uh, the average user may not know anything about, like, what is a share sheet? That's been around for mm-hmm. a couple of years, but, you know, that, that can be extended and that's been the way to do it now. But now you can, if you're texting with someone and you just want to send something, check your iMessage apps that might have exactly what you're looking for without even having to leave your app. Okay. Sending links got nicer. Right. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It just looks like. It doesn't give you like the blocky like word link. Mm. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think uh, rich preview is that what they're called? So it'll it'll basically download the page. Yeah, rich previews in yeah, like some that. form or another. Yeah. So is is this beyond like the level of I share a link on Facebook and it grabs the one image that the page has no, set? No, it, it as... uses open graph tags underneath. So it, okay. it it uses the same thing that Facebook does actually. Okay. To share a site, so I could send you the the iphone 7 review that i did on my website and it would show that nice photo of my iphone 7 that took with your camera thank you ian Mm -hmm. plug in my post again a so you could you could send a link and it will if it's you know a modern website it'll 
generally support rich preview because it'll have um, these tags built in. So I, th- and that works on both ma- the new Mac OS Sierra as well as iOS 10. So that, that mm. adds a lot of, so Facebook Messenger has done that for quite a while now. So it, it kind of modernizes iMessage in that way. Yeah. I mean, also they have the drawing thing. I don't, I don't know what that is. I really don't. I'm just like. Digital, so I've, oh. there, there's like, there's the handwriting and drawing. So if you put your phone on the side, then you can draw something. So here I'm sending hi to Brandon. What's really bad about it, though, is that, like, if you try to, like, it sends right away. Like, you don't have an option to, like, send it. Oh, it to, to go goes. back and, like, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. Can you draw things? You can draw things on, like, images that you're going to send and stuff like that, right? Because you can, yeah, so you can put stickers on top of so them, too, the right? So the iMessage app place, and then there's the there's the digital touch, which is similar to what was first in the iPod Watch. So you can draw, send a fake heartbeat. Um, you can also change colors and draw on a larger screen. You can also pull up an image, take a photo on it, I so need and then draw on that, too. So then you can... Um, kind of caption an image more like snapchat or something or other so i'm you know drawing myself on a on my phone and sending it to brandon because i have nothing better to do while recording this so that's so you can kind of caption it um draw on it 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 seems a little clunky i don't think i would use it much my i've had a text from my uncle and my aunt and my sorry and my mom both just kind of when i've been telling them about about the new features you know the, the next text i'll get from them whenever that is is using the drawing feature just so they can you know use a new feature uh-huh. and it, it like it works but i feel like typing would be just as efficient yeah as efficient only time will tell what people will use yeah so another another feature here is uh reaction so you can react with like a haha or uh um i should actually I got that like i have are these similar so, so to you, like you long press on a message so this is not 3d touch you can react with a heart, oh, a yes. thumbs up, thumbs down, haha, yeah. two exclamation marks, or a question mark. So this is kind of the same concept as like in Slack when you can react with an emoji. Yeah, exactly, exactly like it. Except you only have five or six or six or seven sure. options rather than every emoji ever. The, yeah, <laughs> and including custom emojis that you've created just for that Slack group. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like Facebook again. Like, um, I know if you hold on the like button, uh-huh. you can like heart it, haha, and do that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like it's a, it's a quick like huh, react. You know, I've seen it more than the read receipt, but I cool I approve or dis- so. It's, mm-hmm. I think this is especially good for just like a confirmation or a group message where you say, "Everyone, let me know that you are on board" or something. Thumb it all up. Also, what I love is that they actually, if you go into your like information button, you can put up the send read receipts or like not so like if you don't want the person oh. seeing that you read the tweet you can just and that's that's per off. thread now it's not global yes or no it's okay. per conversation so you can have some person that you don't really like and like <laughs> i'm not gonna let them see when i've read it but if you know you have like a, a good friend or a significant, significant other or something and you want them to see then yeah you mm-hmm. can turn it on for that i mean it's intimidating if you like just look at your message and it says a red and they haven't responded like are you mm-hmm. mad um i did that sometimes and then i'll notice 12 to 15 hours later crap the next time i open up the app and i'm like oh totally forgot to respond yesterday <laughs> but they clearly saw it said red but so i gotta say that the concept of like reactions to messages um is uh makes a much bigger difference when you are in a group chat because like when you're when you're one-to-one it's doesn't it, it's not that big of a deal to like send an emoji as a reaction right also, but then if you're in a in a group chat and everybody's sending emoji to react to something then that's message ping message ping message ping for every single person whereas if they're all as reactions that are attached to that one message not everybody needs to get pinged that there's a new reaction on that message I mean, what yeah. i like is that also um if you po- if you type like smiley face in the Oh sure, thing, yeah, that's right. It lights up, kind of, and then it gives you like, orangeifies the text, right? Orange. Yeah, it orange. Yeah, and then if you click on it, it'll just show you all the different types of smiley it, faces. Okay, so is this this is when you when you type in the text and you open the emoji keyboard, then you yeah. can quick hot replace words. This is gonna make that fad of like writing novels using only emoji way easier. I mean, it's gonna be horrible. Scrolling through, <laughs> all I can't this. wait for it to be done. 
<laughs> they changed the emojis also. Like, you do not have the gun emoji anymore. You have the water gun. Oh, like, water pistol? I don't even know what I think. The, I think the emoji is actually called pistol. Super soaker TM. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are the days. <laughs> so, in addition... You know that was invented by a NASA engineer, right? Really? Sorry. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I'm just... Um, ra- random, random Brandon fact right there for you. Yep. I like it. So, in addition to reactions, you can send stickers. I don't know. Do we talk about stickers? Oh, I, yeah, I mentioned sticker packs. So these are collections of images that you can yes, send on their own or overlay an existing message or a picture or something. And if you click on them, they get bigger. So you can like... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. I bet underneath them. it just sends an image, I think. Because on an older iOS or macOS version, you can still see stickers, but it just mm. shows up as an attached image every time. Okay. Rather than overlaid on Maybe, the message. Uh... Oh, yes, it does. Yep. Yep. So th- stickers can be a very good way of reacting to something or kind of characterizing an image of someone Mm -hmm. and just just this weekend i know there is there's a sticker app that uh sent a sticker with the blue in the blue font looking like it sent from so if you sent the sticker to someone they would read it and you could so you would overlay it over their existing message and it would look as if they had sent this message so if someone sends you you know something like oh i hate you're so mean you could send the the sticker that said oh you're so sweet and and then it would look like, and they'd say, ah, I didn't send that. But it's really just, you know, an image overlay of the text that they said. But, you know, they may not be able to tell because uh-huh. Apple, People I are think, dumb sometimes. Yeah. I think Apple pulled it or forced the app, de- <sighs> app developers to change it. So it's no longer in the store. That's so brilliant, though. Also, what's confusing is that they added games to iMessage. Ah, yeah. And I remember seeing this, <laughs> but I haven't. I mean, okay, well, I have tic-tac-toe. So me and my friend have been playing tic-tac-toe for like three days. And it's just an ongoing streak of messages saying, oh, you won. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I don't know. They don't have a lot right now. Like, okay, wait. So I guess this, this falls more into the iMessage application rather than more sticker pack. And so I, I don't have All much right. experience with that. I haven't. I'd be interested to see can, what that Can third-party like. developers make uh, games for I, I iMessage? Can. Yep. Yep. They can. Apple doesn't release the only the only things Apple has for iMessage ex- apps out of the box is the um, GIF search and music, right? Music and yeah, Apple Music. So you can send okay. a tune and you can play a song in a thread. I mean, they don't have a lot. They don't have a lot right now. Like it's pretty like. I mean, there's word searches and words with friends. There's yeah, connect that? four. Are any of these monetized? Does, I'm not sure. Does it cost money to get yes. any of these yeah. games in here? There's one that's 99 cents. I think a lot chef. of I think a lot of these iMessage apps actually uh, cost money. I think more so than your standard other app, just mm. because they're new, and you know it's a new thing, so people might be willing to pay for it. Okay. So like I think, these Pokemon Pixel or I don't know, they're like oh, what are they? stickers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. Cool. I'm like I'm not gonna pay. Yeah, I think money. I definitely bought. Um, yeah, I think I definitely bought a uh, a sticker pack for, I think it was Crossy Road, uh, that amazing <laughs> infinite runner game yeah. uh, that that swept the, the world for a little while there. Yes, uh, and that is very entertaining. Um, I, yeah, but I think that's the only time I've ever paid money for one of these. I spent like three or four dollars on some Icon Factory bundle that had six apps in it, including uh, Stinky Poo. <laughs> best one it's all p- smiling pile of poo emojis oh, doing different things you're, you're right you're right i bought that one too <laughs> <laughs> i also like how like they're shaped different they're more ovally oh yeah than... the the icon yeah preview yeah i think then... it kind of fits the oh you can get oh you can get tumblr tumblr i bet it's a do they have gif search and things or posts i wonder that would make oh, sense nice. for tumblr so um, I would say my my favorite game sticker pack is the Alto's Adventure. I really like the art in that game. Oh yeah, and they they have some good some good ones. Also, I still need to play that game. Also, Duet, which I know you you, yes! you played. They have stickers as well. It I don't just remember what they are, but oh my gosh, they, stickers do exist for it. That yeah, so check uh, it out. I'd be way more excited for this if I if today wasn't the first time that I had ever signed into iMessage. <laughs> but you have an iMessage account. No. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I have to the your email at least, right? I, well, yeah, I ha- I have the the Apple account that I made when setting up this iPad for the first time. Also, you can access music and Savannah 
like to just send me little clips of songs that she had in her library. Mm, mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, okay. It sends you links in Apple Music to buy them, right? So you can like, oh, right, I like this. Of course. Which I think honestly uh, makes sense. And it's mm -hmm. a good way of... I have I have a, a friend at Morris who is a senior of the series on Tekker. We talk about lighting and stuff and um, I'll we'll talk music. We have pretty similar tastes. And so we'll say, have you heard the song? And I'll send him an Apple Music link. And then I'm hoping that he just taps preview right there. And then if he likes it, he just goes to the music app and hits add to the library. I, yeah, I remember when uh, Google Music was first launching and they had like, you know, Google Plus was also big at the time. So yeah. they were like, if you share, you know, this link to other people on your Google Plus circles, then anybody who's in your circle gets a one free play of this song to like, so it wasn't just a preview, it was the whole song. Okay, uh, that's kind of nice. But, remember you know, when it was only Apple, the first. Remember when Apple gave free songs out? They stopped doing that. The free like, free song, yeah, free single like, of the week yep. on Tuesdays, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember getting uh, Fireflies by Owl City for free. Oh, on, nice. On one of those like, days. Some of them were actually really good, and then they just stopped because they think of Apple Music. That might have... Well, I think, I think they stopped that like I when I was in early parts of high school. It was it was a, quite a while ago, mm -hmm. I think, they stopped that. And it was probably... I think that probably existed to kind of promote <laughs> iTunes. And I bet they were yeah. like, all right, we're big enough. We don't need to do this anymore. We don't need to <laughs> sync thousands yeah. of dollars into music every week i used to be on like a newsletter of like the coolest uh free music on google music and stuff and so that was how i built up my library by quite a bit yeah honestly. i'm uh i follow the e freebies <laughs> subreddit and they'll often post links to free albums and things okay so we have one more feature in iMessage <laughs> oh yeah or messages uh brandon you want to get this one Yes, yeah, sure. And that is effects, if I recall correctly. Uh, mm -hmm. And these are kind of those neat little uh, kind of ways that you can send a message. So for example, I a little bit ago typed out a message to Brian. Um, and uh, what you can do is by, I think, long pressing or 3D touching the uh, send button, uh, it'll pull up this menu. To, of course, that depends on the hardware you have. It'll pull up the menu that allows you to pick between uh, shouting the message or um, making it a secret message or, or something like that. Or ta-da! Um, just pull up the full oh, yeah. list How here. How the heck do you do that? Yeah. That's like another thing that I So have. start typing a message and the send button, just uh, long press or you have a SCC on three touch. So long press on the send button and then you can see a screen of different reveal oh. effects. And this is where the famous uh, lasers now, and balloons exist, then if you go to the exist, next right? page, you go from, uh, from bubble to screen effect. And screen effects, you can do things like Sending confetti or balloons or lasers. Lasers. And I think sound is also sent with these. Yes, indeed. So it can be obnoxious. I like the lasers. It's <laughs> it's kind of crazy how overwhelming oh the effects are. <laughs> so I, it just, I don't, I can't say I often see a navigation like view fireworks. with a trend, like a very low opacity with just like crazy colors behind it. You know, like like a laser. Mm. It's just a strange. It doesn't quite fit iOS, in my opinion. Oh, I see. Yeah, but I. I mean, hey, it's flashy. It's it's new. It's cool. So ship and, it, and it'll totally freak people out who didn't know that that was oh, no. a feature. And then you send one of these to them, and they're like, "What right. is going on with my phone?" No, that that happened to me. My friend sent me one. I was like, "What is it doing? What is it doing?" <laughs> Though, if you have the yeah. reduce motion accessibility feature turned on, you will just see. Parenthesis sent with lasers. Parenthesis, so you cannot do the full screen effects. Tragic. If you have that, that's pretty great. Okay, so messages are that's done. We've covered the extensive feature. Yes, this was, indeed. I think, one of the biggest features of iOS 10, and Apple clearly was trying to push for people to use iMessage. Mm -hmm. So Maps also got a pretty big redesign. Oh, it did. So there are now um, app integrations on it. So uh, I believe Uber and Lyft. So ride sharing is in there so if you search somewhere you can see how to get there as well as um taking uber there so if you search for a place or something like that you can do that so actually on the bottom there's drive walk transit or ride and ride will use the third-party app integrations now you can also um the there's some some redesign so like if you drop a pin it looks a little different um there's some more inline mm. rich information about an application and the, the searching isn't like a full screen. It's kind of like a bottom portion that can slide up and slide down as you flick it in and out of the view. I haven't used it too much, and I found that it's 
Well, I've used it a bit, but it's it's not super huge difference. I, I like the the visual redesigns, and it seems nice. I don't know. I don't have too much to say about it. Yeah, absolutely. I'd agree completely. It seems like uh, they're, they're, it's a little bit closer to Google Maps in the kind of breadth and depth of the features it has, right? So yeah. the, the transit directions, of course, being a thing that I really appreciate. Um, MSP needs and to come in like, there. As, as a result, like, yeah, exactly, exactly, right? Um, I, I just like that they have the button there, though. That's, that's helpful. We'll, we'll get it someday. Yeah. Um, and like the, the, the uh, end and the other aspects and about. routing and buttons are like bigger and flashier. They're like solid red or solid green to go. I, I don't know. I find that visually appealing and easy to say, oh, that's the button I press. Yeah, exactly. They tell you the weather. Definitely feels more finished. That's right. Yeah. They do tell you the weather. Like right now it is 64 degrees. Also in the news app, it'll tell you the weather. Fun fact. Yes. If you use that. Yes. Oh, wait. You can click on it. Um. Any other thoughts, Brandon? Yes, indeed. Uh, sorry, I think I missed that there. Uh, the the uh, so the we talked about the buttons, right? And then you guys kind of froze up for a second until until I heard any thoughts, Brandon. Uh, so I might have missed. The, I, I just any, any more thoughts on maps? Oh yes, um, I've I've added uh, Google Maps to a folder, um, and I'm, I'm using Apple Maps primarily now. Apple Maps, along with a, a transit app called OMG Transit, that. Uh, a really cool person here in Minneapolis build. So, oh my gosh! Oh. Also, I better download that. If you go yeah. somewhere, um, it's it... it gives you the exact location, like Lat Long, or or just uh, well, I guess Lat Long and the address looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gives you the latitude and yes, the indeed. longitude also. <laughs> so you know your exact point. Just the latitude. <laughs> <laughs> You're somewhere on this line. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been using Apple Maps and for transit because uh, Apple Maps does not support Metro Transit or Minneapolis-St. Paul. Though I'm going to Boston on Boston mm -hmm. on Thursday, and I'm so excited to use transit again. I've used it twice in London and in Berlin, and it was the best. I loved it so much. And I've been using a an app called, I think, Transit. That's what I've been transit. using. That's what I've been <laughs> using for my, And that, that app also has Uber integration. Transit. Right on. So... In addition to maps, we also have photo searching and memories. So updates to the photos app. So this does a full local to device, no sending information back to Apple, uh, kind of natural or not that deep, deep learning, machine learning. Kind of just get it. I don't know. It's all. So it searches for photos and says, this is what's in it. So it just kind of adds tags for each photo. So you can search like sky, mountain, dog, cat, computer controller beach something like you know generic terms like that and find all the photos in your library that that have these attributes and so it'll it'll scan through your library at night when you have your phone charged so we have a large library so if you use the iCloud photo library i know i do so i pay 299 a month for 200 gigs in iCloud and i have about uh 13,000 photos i think so it can also, it'll take a, a little while to search through all them but then it'll it'll tag it and it'll also generate memories so cool cool things that it thinks you might be interested in based on I guess people in the photos and where you are and things. So it'll you know let you reflect back on the year or previous few months, saying, "Oh, that's what I did. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice." It'll make a little slideshow video that you can. Oh share. yeah, there's like the photo of the day, and that's usually like, I don't know. Is that I I don't use the photos app that I I just like see most recent. That's about my extent. I don't know. I get the photos of the day all the time. Is it like, really yeah. photo? Oh, Interesting. Yeah. It's weird. Cool. Do you use the new photo? Yeah, I haven't run into that yet. I haven't run into the photo. I uh, run into photos of the day uh, at all yet. But yeah, the the most interesting thing I like you, Brian, pay for the iCloud plan, um, and uh, as a result, uh, that that makes it really easy to to, to have all those tags as such. Uh, because I don't want to be like pulling down my entire photo library, which is not quite not quite thirteen thousand photos, but uh, kind of on that order of magnitude, shall we say. Uh, it's it's easier to kind of rely on that uh, kind of tagging uh, that as as many of them that are downloaded that that tagging really helps. But I don't have to like re-download every photo to to kind of scroll yeah. past uh, the of, ones that aren't applicable. Best of last three months. Okay. Like, oh, so that's in the memories tab. Nice. Gotcha. Yeah, I like I I haven't used memories very much, but I think it'd be it'll be cool, especially if I don't look at photos for quite a while. I just take them and you know keep going. And I'm like. 
what did I do in the last year? That might be really cool to see. Like, like <laughs> oh, that's right. I did that. You know, before before Time Hop comes up saying, here's what you did exactly a year ago. <laughs> yeah, I hope. Yeah, I hope it's not as obnoxious as like get a notification every other day saying like, hey, this is what you were doing six years ago on this day. And it's like, great. That's another cross country meet. <laughs> I had a lot of those. <laughs> yeah, it's. I've had time hop since I think freshman year of, of college now, so four years, and it's it's at the point where I'm like, all right, I've seen all this, like it's mm-hmm. pretty recent in my head. I've gone back and deleted all those awful tweets already. <laughs> I think I actually need to re-add my Twitter archive. I think it lost it or something, hmm. so it fully hasn't. Yeah. But it's it's kind of fun seeing what I've done in college now. That Twitter needs to. You can't look at indirects anymore. That's a problem. Can't look at what indirects. So um. When you used to be able to go into the app, you could search your, like, your user, your handler, and then there's settings on the side, and you could push um, friends only, and it would give you all the tweets of your friends saying your name. Okay. You could see what they've been saying. Oh, cool. About you, whenever. I've I've been using Tweetbot for four years now, so I, I, I can't say I have any... We were very much experienced with the native Twitter app in terms of what features it has. Interesting. So, yep, same boat here. Uh, Tweetbot all the gosh darn way. Do you have a Tweetbot t shirt from Cotton Bureau? <laughs> you should totally get it the next time. I have the Tapbots and the Tweetbot. Wait, do I have the t- <gasps> I, don't, I don't think I've seen my Tapbot shirt in forever. Where did it go? Oh, no. Oh, no. It's probably in Denmark now that I think about it. Crap. I haven't seen it anyway, shirt. Anyway, I feel forever. like this is a topic Sorry. for another uh, podcast. <laughs> You can cut that one out of the episode if you want. <laughs> so another episode, wow, episode, another feature in iOS 10 is rich notifications. So we kind of touched on this. So this is um, similar to the lock screen where you can view, you can interact with the uh, notification a little more. So, you know, you can quick reply. I think they opened up quick reply to be more than just Apple for texting. So they, from a, from a private API, it's now public. So things like WhatsApp or another app. no. Definitely Tweetbot used to be able to reply. So that was just text. I think you can do custom buttons now. There's also two slides. You have your widget still up there. If you Yeah, on the lock screen. Yeah. Well, actually, no, in Notification Center 2, I think. Yeah. How, yeah. Do you, how do you activate these these uh, Which... these extra functionality on, on, so, on so notifications? I, for I... example, on Mail on my iPhone here, I can 3D touch and I can see a larger preview and I can say trash or mark is red. Mm-hmm. Maybe if you long press as well, I though I'm not like... sure because oh, it 3D... is long press. I just got into the Washington Post. I may just <laughs> be in the situation where none of the three apps that are showing up right now have this, uh, you know, have built this in yet. Yeah, but it would be super duper useful for like inbox, um, and um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, so you can do more with them. You can interact with an app a little mm-hmm. more rich way i guess pretty much defines rich notifications so then kind of similar is another in, uh, enhancement is 3d touch widgets and previews so this is so on ios 9 on the iphone 6s you could 3d so this only works in the iphone 6s and 7 so devices with 3d touch so you can 3d touch on an app and if it's and this is on the home screen yep on the home screen so for example, um, I'm going to do an app that probably doesn't support this. So like one second every day, which is an app I, I use, if I 3D touch on it, it just says share one SE and it does the share sheet. And then I can share a link using the standard share sheet to the App Store app. But then on an app like Instagram, I can 3D touch. And this this feature is new in iOS 9. So I can say new post, view activity, search, direct, or share Instagram. Mm-hmm. So this is a way of jumping to a certain spot in an app. So like on Tweetbot, I can So how did tweet this change last in photo. iOS 10? So now the app supports it. You can 3D touch and it'll show a widget. So on oh. Carrot Weather, I have Share Carrot, more, uh, more St. Paul Current Location Search. But in addition, I have this new widget that says the current current conditions. And then I can tap on that and it will open up the app. I think this matches the the smaller form of the Notification Center widget. So at least in my experience, it's kind of been similar Mm-hmm. So in Notification Center, you have. Um, Is that the? Oh no, that's right. Yeah. So on on here, so carrot weather, for example, uh, there's it's the same preview at least for carrot as the 3D touch on the app. But in Notification Center, there's that little button that says show more, and then it can go in the expanded view. And then like Fantastic Hal, if it's on the smaller version, it'll say 
you know, what event do I have tomorrow? What time is it at? It shows a little timeline. I can do show more and then it shows a whole calendar of the month and then I can tap into different days and go to different months. And it's all within Notification Center. So there's some more widget um, features. So it's not quite Android level where you have a, an always present widget on your home screen, but it's just a 3D touch away. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so kind of in addition to that, like the next the next kind of biggest thing is I'd say the redesigned uh, news app, uh, which is kind of given the same sort of treatment to the music app was, I feel. Um, and yeah. uh, the result is I think it's it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit easier to, to read through. The last iteration, if I recall correctly, was a little bit more like a broadsheet newspaper. Uh, this so uh, everything kind of almost had its own full purview of the screen as you as you swipe down, but everything's a little bit more compartmentalized and uh, in a, in a way that makes a little bit more sense. In addition, you get the mastheads for each of the publications as you swipe through the um, the news app, which I think is a really nice touch that, uh, if I recall correctly, wasn't present or wasn't as emphasized in iOS nine. I love the news app. Actually, actually, I really like it. But like, no, SPPS right? is ugly because. For some reason, they don't let you have the news app. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why? That seems silly, but we won't get there. Yeah. No. I, I don't use the news app too often, but when I remember about it, I'm like, all right, I can like check the news. Then I have to like, scroll through endless amounts of Reddit posts or Twitter and like, to finally see a little bit of news here and there. So I should really remember to use it more because I have a good time every time I, I do use it. And it's free. Yeah. It's free. <laughs> and it's in an app rather than like a website like Google News. Well, actually, Google News has an app now. Oh yeah, they've Google, had Google News and Weather. They've least, they've had that app and everybody hates it. Yeah, I don't nobody like using it. it. I had it for a little while. I'd rather just save a bookmark to Google or news.google.com on my home screen yeah, rather than use that sure. app. Right. So another another thing in addition to the news app is contextual predictions. So this is something like if someone asks for an address or you're an address field in a web browser filling out a form, it will suggest you know here's your address dash home or dash mm. work. So it's inline things. And so you can also do like phone numbers. So you type saying, you know, someone says, hey, what's your number? You so so can this start is new in Safari? Um, it, no, it's, it's uh, I think, universal. So it's in the quick type. Okay. Uh, predictions bar is where these show up. So it'll it'll suggest things that will be often for you to type. So like email, mm-hmm. phone number, address, that kind of stuff. So this is a feature of the keyboard. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's where it's important. Okay, cool. And, and, and I guess in addition to the keyboard stuff, there's also multilingual typing. So... Keyboard or languages that support quick type, so the the predictions, mm-hmm. you can type in one language and then switch to another, and it will jump and suggest words in that language. Still based on the same sentence. I or... I don't know. I haven't used it because Danish doesn't support quick type, so oh, okay. it's not a feature that Danish has supported before. Mm-hmm. But I know I think Federico Atigi does that for Italian, and I think he likes it a lot. I think Italian is supported. I don't. Know. I'd assume like German and Spanish. In English mm-hmm. and French I are probably love, all supported. I love using right, right, right. Probably Ke- Chinese, Japanese. I love like kind of cheating at du- Duolingo by using mobile keyboards because they like you know you can't misspell when you're using their their suggestions. Yeah, autocorrect well, is turn, great. I turn autocorrect off. Yeah. Yikes. Oh, that's I I tap on the sig- on the definitions so I can see how it's spelled too much and then I, I depend on that. <laughs> I was Me and Duolingo far in my German, and then I don't know what happened. This is interesting. Three Duolingo users in one room. Hey. Ooh. Okay. Uh, and finally, Apple Pay in the web. So this is some JavaScript you can put in a website and use Apple Pay if you're using Safari on a Mac or your iOS device. So if you're on a Mac, you just have to touch a D on your iOS device to authenticate. And if you're on your iOS device, you just touch ID on your device. So is this like I can visit this website from any uh any device that i have and then once i like it'll just send a thing to my phone saying hey you should authenticate this and then you it's like i could be on my mac trying to pay for something and then it'll send a thing to my phone i think so i've never used it i haven't used it yes indeed have you used this brendan or have you checked it out more i have not run into a website that needs it but i set up kind of a little demo page of sorts um that was way more trouble than it was worth uh and i don't think i'll be able to get it back again but um, that you're that you're able to do so is 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 pretty darn neat. You're you're right that it is. Uh, it'll rely on your watch or I, th- I believe your phone um, is is the primary way to do it. Um, and it just does so over the same protocols that provide uh, uh, continuity, right? Yep. Um, that's that's kind of how how that transaction is handled. But yep, uh, you just approve it from your mobile device with a touch ID. Uh, sensor and that sort of uh, NFC secure element. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for those 
who don't can't quite visualize this. Imagine, you know, like the PayPal button that can be on a website. Just now imagine another one underneath that that's black and says Apple Pay. Apple logo and the pay in text. I think that's I'm too poor for this. Actually. <laughs> yeah, yes, that yeah. that's actually the biggest problem with like mobile payment systems is it's really hard for people to get proficient with them because the only time that you're ever using them is when you're spending money. And I can't just like go out and practice with it all the time and spend five dollars each time, you know? Yeah. So I, I hope the Apple Pay on the web is very easy. Yeah. I will jump to use it if I ever find it, but I I I when I'm in person, I try and use cash. So I don't use normal Apple Pay as much as I would like. Do you do the wallet? Um, I I mean, I have my credit card on my phone, so I can use Apple Pay with my watch or phone. I've only actually used it with my watch, um, but that works. I haven't used wallet for any. I've done um, airline tickets. I find that's pretty nice, mm. um, and I'll be using that on Thursday for my flight. But otherwise, that's about it. I think I have my iTunes gift card balance in there, but I have never really used it. Um, I've had a couple things that have tickets in there for um, QR codes or barcodes, but that's about it. All right. right yeah, Eventbrite tickets, uh, some some airline tickets, uh, stuff like that. I actually just paid for uh, groceries today using Apple Pay. Uh, fun fact: Minneapolis St. Paul grocery stores often uh, accept Apple Pay if you're if you feel that. Um, but yeah, I haven't run into a thing that you could use it on the web in production yet. It's just kind of a fun thing to test. I'm excited to see it. So takeaway, is there any reason for people not to upgrade to iOS 10? Nope, not at all. Do it. <laughs> Good. That's a, that's a nice... I guess in general, I'd, I'd just... Go ahead. In, in general, the, the only thing I'd add is uh, if you have a slow phone, it might be time to upgrade and then uh, upgrade your hardware and then uh, use iOS 10. If you're not happy with the speed of your phone, that's the only thing that'll help. Yeah, right. though I would I'd almost argue to do it anyway, even if it's slow, because all the iMessage, iMessage features and whatnot are going to just confuse you if you don't. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, You should upgrade it. It'll just keep bothering you if you don't. So That's true. That Get rid of the true. notification. Yeah. <laughs> do it. Make it happy. <laughs> all right. So this has been our review of iOS 10. Uh, once again, you can find the show notes for this at thenexus.tv slash SO10. That's some nice synergy there. With the, the operating system number and our episode Ooh. number. <laughs> it was totally on purpose. Totally. Yes. Um, yeah. If you want to uh, contact us, we have a contact link there on the page, or you can find most of us on Twitter. I'm Ian Arbuck. Which one do I say? <laughs> oh, um, oh no. Um, the, the one with the most followers. How's yeah, that? the one with the most followers. Yes. Um, okay. I made King Jensen. Yeah, that's my private. That's, that's not the one that has the most followers. No, that doesn't. Because the one with the most followers is actually... <laughs> annoying and so you're another should... one here who has multiple twitter accounts i do hey i have i have four signed into my phone right now five on my desktop because i have an access tv there oh yeah and access to two more what's your primary one brian uh the one you should probably find me at is at underscore brian mitchell underscore and actually i just hit four thousand followers on my main so Wow, you are ahead of everyone here. I am. You're even ahead of how many people Brandon follows. <laughs> he follows. What are you at now, Brandon? Uh, so let's see. I follow. Uh, that's a good question. I think I followed just a handful of people after the last JavaScript Minnesota. I follow 2,405 people, and uh, 1,088 people follow me. So yeah, you beat me by quite a bit there. Yeah. How do you <laughs> keep up with that many people? That was, no. He has a uh, list of cool people that you just hope to be in. I think. Yep, this is true. I get notifications when they tweet occasionally, depending on the device. In fact, I have to set that up on my phone now because uh, all my notifications are all way out of whack. Right. Uh, but anyhow, if you would like to contact me, the place to do so is Brandon underscore uh, MN. That, that is my Twitter. That is where you can find me. And be sure to follow at the Nexus TV on Twitter as well to check out any latest podcasts or things that are going on with this network. Bingo. Have a good one, everybody.